Um, I would like to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Dennis Tucker. I'm the development manager here at Third Wave. Uh, so I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day overseeing of all the applications that we put together, um, making sure that they're ready for SAP 9.1, as, as Carl had mentioned, is in general release. Uh, Third Wave as a company has been in business for over 20 years as a consulting company. And I've been with the company since 2009. We've tried to be a leading developer of certified integrated applications that we feel will extend SAP Business One in areas that are not covered in the basic system. Uh, Third Wave's been a gold SSP partner since 2003 uh, and has won several awards, including the Pinnacle Award and SSP of the Year. Uh, now, in today's session, we're going to be covering two particular applications, but we do have a large number of applications that cover a variety of areas. Uh, from financials with credit card processing, our maker check printing and electronic funds transfer, uh, our marketing application. Today we're going to be focusing on shipping and on return materials authorization. Uh, I'm actually going to cover those in, in the reverse order of the way they are in the title. And you may want to be wondering why we would go through the effort to create a return materials authorization package since Business One has returns functions built into it. The core reason that we did that is when a customer calls you and says that they're going to be returning items A, B, and C, you know, how do you manage that in your SAP Business One system? If you're using the return screen in Business One, you're going to be creating an inventory transfer of the actual items and affecting your inventory. But that may not be what you need because the customer has only said that they're going to be returning certain items. What if they said they're going to return three and they only send you back one? Or they've called you and then they decide they're not going to send you back anything at all. You've impacted your inventory if you're using the built-in returns item. With the RMA application, what we allow you to do is to track the intended returns without infecting your inventory so that you can manage the items when they come in, and you can even, if you want to, add an inspection process to what's being returned. So what we've done is in SAP Business One, we've added an RMA maintenance form. Now the RMA in SAP Business One is a standalone UDO-based marketing document. We do have the screen that's built into the UI, so it's integrated into SAP Business One. And the form is going to look and function like any regular SAP marketing document form. It's going to allow you to handle all different types of items. So you can handle regular items, you can handle batch items or serial items if you want to. Uh, and it will allow you to, as I mentioned, maintain this outside of the regular SAP process and inventory effects until you're ready. So let's say that we have a customer who's called us up and we're going to go ahead and enter an RMA in there for them because they want to return a few different items into the system. So I'm going to pick a couple of different regular items here and I'm going to add a quantity for each one and I'm going to make it more than one because at the end of this I want to sort of illustrate to you how we can approve returns, you can mark things as failed returns, or if you're going to be using the inspection process, you can even send them out for service. So I'm going to add uh, three of the first item, and I'm going to add two of the second item. Now, the RMA maintenance form allows you to control many different aspects of the RMA, which will then also go over to the return when it's converted. Uh, some of these would be the return reason code. So, for example, there may be one or two or three different reasons that the person is sending these back. Now, on the individual lines, we do have the first return reason defaulted, and this is a, a fully configurable reason code. It's user-defined, so you can enter whatever kind of reason codes you would like to use. And that's going to be the default return reason on each of the lines that we've added to the RMA. But we do have the ability to add up to two additional reason codes if there's more than one. The other thing that, that's defaulted is the expected disposition. And this is also, again, a user customizable feature. You can set up your own disposition codes defined at, to meet your own individual needs. Now, the other thing that you'll notice 
is that the RMA allows you to get to the inspection process. So we'll, when we convert this to a return, we'll cover the, the inspections, but we're defaulting the receiving warehouse as returns. So when we convert this to the return in the system, that information will pass over as well. Now there is an RMA configuration screen in the application that allows you to set certain qualities. We've talked about a reason code, we've talked about the default disposition. You can also set the three different warehouses that you want to use in the system for if an item has eventually passed, failed, or been marked for service. And if items have been marked for service, we also have the ability to generate the service call. And there are aspects of the service call that can be defaulted from this configuration screen as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my RMA into the system. And what I want to highlight here is that when you convert this to a return, and you can do that simply by clicking the copy to return button here, when you're ready, let's say a week has gone by and your customer has, has finally returned the items. When you copy it to a return, as I mentioned, the, the warehouse gets defaulted to returns. You do have the ability on the returns document if, let's say, for example, they didn't return both items. You could remove one of the items from the return, or if they didn't return the quantity that they had originally told you, you can reduce the quantity as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add this return into the system. And I'm going to go back to the RMA screen and I'm going to refresh the RMA. And the status on the RMA gets updated because it recognizes that we've converted this to a return. It does indicate if you want to use inspections that there is a, a quantity to inspect. And what we're going to do here is there's also a results tab. So this is an easy way to sort of see, here are the items, the statuses that we've received them. We're going to use the inspection so we know that we have three that we need to inspect for uh, the first item and two that we need to inspect for the second item. We can easily do that by clicking the RMA inspection button here. If we do that, we're going to load the inspection screen only with the items for this one particular RMA. But if we want to look at all of the open items that can be inspected, if we go into the inventory, there's an RMA inspection selection screen. If I launch that, there's a criteria here. Now, if I leave the, the criteria blank, I can specify documents, customers, or warehouses. But if I leave it blank and I hit OK, it's going to bring up the inspection screen with all of the RMA documents that have items that are ready to be inspected. I'm just going to select the two for the RMA document that I added to the system. And what I can do is I can identify how many of these items have passed. So I'm going to say in this case that one of each item passed. I'm going to fail one of each item. And again, we have uh, user-definable failure codes. So you can set up whatever failure codes work for your particular process, and I can enter up to three of them for each, uh, each item that I am failing. And I'm going to send one of the first item into service, and I can pick a service code too as well. And again, you can pick up to three different service codes. Now, when I, when I hit the Add button on the inspection stream, what's going to happen is, is we're going to initiate an inventory transfer in SAP Business One. So I'm going to execute the inventory transfer. Now, because I have an item that has been marked for service, the application is going to automatically prompt you whether or not you want to create the service call. Now, I did show on the configuration screen before that you can default certain aspects of the service call. I'm going to click yes, and the system will create the service call and alert you as to the service call number created for the RMA document. I'll click OK, and my inventory transfer screen came up. 
Now what you'll notice here is I've got separate lines for each individual item because on each item I sent one of each to a different warehouse. So you'll notice that for the items that we have passed, um, those are going from the returns warehouse to the 01 warehouse, which we designated as the past warehouse. Two of them that failed are going to the disposal warehouse, and the one that we marked for service is going to be sent to the designated RMA service warehouse. Now the efficient part of this is that, that anything passed gets transferred, as I mentioned, to each of the respective warehouses. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in the inventory transfer. Now if I go back to the RMA maintenance screen and I refresh it again, we'll see the results again. We received three and two of each of the items. You can see how they were uh, distributed. One of each was passed, one of each was failed, and one went to service. The other thing that you can do is there's this service calls tab on the RMA. So you can see any associated service calls that were created when you processed your return. And that's how easy it is to use the RMA application. Uh, again, the reason that we designed it was to allow you to track your returns outside of the SAP inventory. Uh, in the event that, say, someone calls you up and says that they want to return an item, you don't want to necessarily impact your inventory because they may return it, they may not, they may only send a few back when they said they were going to send five. So it does allow for that. It also allows for the easy tracking of the reasons for the return, the reasons for failure, if you need to send something for service, if you want to use the inspection process. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our ShipEasy application. Now ShipEasy, when you think about shipping, you're thinking about certain functions. You're thinking about validating addresses, getting rate quotes, um, being able to actually ship the package, getting the tracking number, generating the labels for the package. With the third wave ShipEasy application, we have the ability to do shipping in two different ways. You can do shipping through web services. Uh, the benefits of that is that all of the functions are performed inside of Business One. The ShipEasy application screens are all in the user interface, so they look and feel like regular SAP screens. You do have the ability to get the address validation the rate quoting, and with web services we support not only UPS and FedEx but also the U.S. Postal Service. If you do your shipping through ODBC, you have the ability to use the carrier software. So people who would implement through ODBC may be familiar already with UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. Uh, those UPS and FedEx are the only two carriers that we support for ODBC. Uh, and there is no rate quote functionality in, in ODBC shipping. What I'm going to be demonstrating today is simply a, a quick run through of the web services portion of ShipEasy. And in order to do that, I'm going to start out at the sales order level. And I'm going to add in a sales order for one of my demo customers. I'm going to go ahead and add the sales order into the system. And if I go back to it, you can get rate quotes by clicking on the freight quote button here at the bottom of the screen. This is going to load the freight quote screen. And what will happen is ShipEasy allows you to map the shipping type selected on the sales order to a particular carrier shipping type. So in this system that we're working with, it's mapped to FedEx ground shipping. Now, I do not have to simply get rates for FedEx ground shipping. I'm going to go ahead and, and simply enter a weight in here. And there's an option to get rates for your selected service or to get rates for all FedEx services. 
Now, let's say your customer calls up and, and you usually use particular shipping with FedEx. But they want to know, well, you know, I, I'm not sure how important this is. How much is it to get it there in two days? How much is it to get it there overnight? You can simply select the option for get rates for all FedEx services and click the get rates button. So what I'd like to point out is the, the communication on getting these rates is real time. So we're contacting FedEx. We're getting the actual rates based upon the weight. And if you've gotten all services, you get options for each of them. So you, there's three different overnight options with varying rates. Uh, there's FedEx two-day and uh, FedEx ground, which is the one that we had defaulted to originally. So you have the ability to provide options for faster shipping if you want to use them and get real-time rate quotes. I'm going to select FedEx ground for this. So if I click the Choose button, what it's going to do is it will return the information back to our sales order. And the information, the rate quote here, has been added as a freight on the sales order. Now I'm going to do another sales order so that I can, sh I can show the UPS side of this. And, and it doesn't differ much, but uh, we're going to do a couple different invoice generations off of these later. So I'm going to add in a different customer who's defaulted to UPS. Do another quick sales order. Now, in addition to simply getting the rate quoting, there are some other features that you can use as well. Um, you can uh, click on the, the validate button for the ship to address if you want to validate the address. Um, that information you'll get options on the screen. So for example, it would probably fill in the postal code with the four digit extension and things of that nature. Um, we do also support international shipping. Uh, we do have shipping options for the carriers for the COD shipments, third party shipments. Those are all situations that can be handled in the ShipEasy application. Uh, so again, I'm just simply going to put in a wait here and I'm going to just simply get my selected service, so I'll get the rate for that one. And now my freight quote, my rate quote is also on this particular sales order. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy these sales orders to a delivery. And when I add the delivery into the system, I'm going to be prompted if I'd like to create and fill the boxes to the shipment on the delivery note. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And after the delivery gets added to the system, the shipping screen is going to load. So the information from my original shipment should be filled in. And what I'm going to do to do the labels, we do have when you're printing labels, there are a lot of different options here. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to set it as a GIF so that I can show you the label. I'm going to go ahead and click the shipping button here. And now I've got my package shipped, and I've also got a tracking number. So the tracking number information, if you're looking at the delivery, you can load the shipping screen again to get that information. But once we convert the delivery over to an invoice, you'll also be able to access that information through a custom tab that we've added to the form. So I'm going to go ahead and show the labels. and it's sideways, you'll have to excuse it, but uh, this would have been the, the, this is a sample of the shipping label that would be generated if you were actually shipping this package by UPS. Uh, all the shipping information is carried over in addition to the weight, the tracking number, uh, so it's all ready for you to print and affix to your package. So now I'll go back and convert my FedEx shipment as well.
And for, uh, for demonstrating the FedEx printing, I'm going to use the PDF option. But again, there are a number of printing options here. So uh, again, no tracking number up here. I'll go ahead and ship the package. And my tracking number is, is available to me. I will show the labels. And now we've got a FedEx label sample here for what you could print out and affix to your package. Now, in the, in the ShipEasy application, the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and we can convert the, sh the deliveries to an invoice through our invoice generator. That's available under the ShipEasy menu option here. And it's possible, depending upon how you want to use it, you can use it simply to retrieve tracking numbers, or you can use it to retrieve a tracking number and convert to an invoice. So I'm going to leave the criteria here blank. It'll give me everything that I have. I'm going to deselect most of them and simply take the last two that I created, Let's see, which I believe were So 9048 and 9047. Okay, I'll take these two. Uh, one feature of this particular screen, um, you may notice that, that when we got the original rate quote, um, the value that gets put in is also saved in a user-defined field. Uh, so for example, on, on this particular shipment, we quote it at A12, um, and the actual shipping cost comes in at A12. But let's say, for example, um, you had, had overestimated the weight on the quote, um, and when you actually did the shipment, we get the shipping cost here. You do have the ability when you're generating the invoice to adjust the rate if you want to uh, increase the shipping cost for some particular reason or if you want to give a discount or, or decrease the shipping cost. So before you create the invoice, while it does pull in the actual freight cost, you can adjust it up or down if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and process these. And now I've created the two invoices in my system. I can come back here and view them. And they are complete with freight costs for the shipping and ready to be sent to the customer. That pretty much concludes the demonstration as far as web services shipping goes. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of, of features that can be used, um, including the, the COD shipping and third party uh, international shipping. Um, so pretty much whatever you can do with shipping in ShipEasy, we should be able to accomplish that as well.